when your doctor asks if you're sexually active? <laughs> yep, she definitely won that game. I told you there would be a Britney doc on Netflix by the end of the month. There is. We're also getting two other shows on streaming you're gonna lose your mind over. A lot of TV news today. Uma Thurman revealed that her darkest secret is that she had an abortion. All the pop culture inspired costumes you could be for Halloween this year. And then we will take a step back in time and see what happened this week and last week in pop culture history. I'm Alex Clark and this is Poplitics. Not to brag, but I almost always get it right, and this story is no different. A few weeks ago on my personal Instagram story, at Real Alex Clark, I told you I thought there would be a Britney Spears Netflix documentary before the end of September. Most people did not believe me. Today, I have been vindicated because we are getting one September 28th. Hi, my name's Britney Spears. Um, I called you earlier, um, but I'm calling you again because I just wanted to make sure I'm here in the process of ending the conservatorship. Okay, I guess a little humble brag never hurt anyone. It's almost like I spoke this into existence for y'all. You're welcome. The next time you want the streamer gods, not you, Zuck, to give you a doc the world needs, just let me know. No. Anyway, it's called Britney vs. Spears. Amazing title, right? And Elle magazine is reporting that the Netflix doc will be directed by true crime filmmaker Aaron Lee Carr. You don't know who she is, but you do know one of her other documentaries, I Love You Now Die. Britney vs. Spears has been in the works for over a year, longer than its Hulu predecessor, but it will soon be available to stream, promising another look at the unusual and constricting legal arrangement that has kept Britney's father, Jamie Spears, in control of her estate since her public breakdown in 2008. I like European, you know, real, real sophisticated types. Like Britney Spears. I feel like the Hulu doc left me wanting so much more from this story. Plus, so much has unfolded since that premiered. So if anyone is to be trusted to distribute a documentary, I think Netflix is the place. Let me know in the comments which Netflix documentary is your absolute favorite. Doesn't have to be about a pop star. Blackfish comes to mind for me, except it had the opposite effect. Now, I'm not terrified of aquariums or hate aquariums. I'm actually terrified of those killer whales. FBI, huh? Uh, excuse me. All right, they're on to us. Get them back to SeaWorld. As if that isn't exciting enough, there's another show coming to a TV near you that we can all be thrilled about. Katherine Hahn is going to play comic genius Joan Rivers in a new series called The Comeback Girl on Showtime. <laughs> Joan basically invented the infamous red carpet line, who are you wearing? Which I love because hashtag fashion, but also modern feminists hate hearing that question. They think that women need to be asked serious intellectual questions, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, you're wearing a ball gown walking down Hollywood Boulevard toward a mall, hoping that maybe you'll receive a little golden naked man named Oscar at the end of the night. We want to know about the dress. We don't care what you think about the environment when you just showed up in a bourbon. Joan was obviously controversial, but she told it like it was. And she asked the questions normal women everywhere still want to know. What are you wearing? AKA, where did you get that top? What the hell is that? A dress. Says who? Calvin Klein. And do we have any Pitch Perfect fans in the house? Aka, awesome. Cause soon we're getting a spinoff series from that movie on Peacock. Uh, TV Line is reporting Adam Devine may not have appeared in the third Pitch Perfect movie, but his character's journey is apparently far from over. The actor is set to reprise the role of Bumper Allen for a Pitch Perfect spinoff series. The new project picks up several years after we last saw Bumper in 2015's Pitch Perfect 2. He's now attempting to restart his music career in Germany, where one of his songs has inexplicably become a hit. I have notes. I have to know, which of these are you the most excited for? The Britney doc, Joan River series, or the Pitch Perfect spinoff? Why don't you wear lipstick? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. To pucka, pucka. Oh, 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 this is just, you look fabulous, look at you. And a little more on the cheeks, and a little more on my cheeks. Actress Uma Thurman has revealed a big secret, not just any secret, but her darkest. So do you think there's something to say? In an essay for the Washington Post criticizing the new Texas abortion law, Uma Thurman says she wants 
once got an abortion in her late teens. She wrote, it has been my darkest secret until now. <gasps> Is it secret? She wrote that when she found out she was pregnant at 15, she had just started her acting career and was living out of a suitcase in Europe far away from her family. She said she wanted to keep the baby, but after discussions with her family, it was decided that it would be the right choice to have an abortion. Uma said this was for a number of reasons, including not being able to give the baby a stable home at that time in her life. However, it created a lot of emotional pain, she said, for her to go through. You and I have unfinished business. She said, the abortion I had as a teenager was the hardest decision of my life, one that caused me anguish then and that saddens me even now. But it was the path to the life full of joy and love that I have experienced. Choosing not to keep that early pregnancy allowed me to grow up and become the mother I wanted and needed to be. What's really sad is that Uma could have had that baby or placed it for adoption and still experienced love and joy. You never need to kill another human being to achieve that. Hi, Mom! I know she wrote this letter to speak out against the new Texas law, but if abortion was truly the morally right decision, why would it be a dark secret? Why would it cause her sadness even now? Sure, Uma Thurman is rich and famous and she has a family now, but deep down, she clearly knows whether she admits it or not, that that abortion was not the morally right thing to do. My hope is that women who read this letter take away the truth of her story rather than the intent behind the letter. I hope it helps them realize that abortion is never a simple solution and it's not healthcare. It's an abundantly painful act with invisible scars that never fade with time. No one should ever be shamed for making this decision, but all women should know that by choosing life, they choose all the wonderful, even if difficult, aspects that come with life too. I smell like beef. I smell like beef. Some of you may know this, but if not, Uma's daughter, Maya Hawk, actually appeared in Stranger Things and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Something Planned Parenthood never tells you prior to an abortion is that the life in question is just that, a life full of interests, talents, personality, and dreams. Maya looks so much like her mom, and she's an actress like her too. You've just got to wonder what that other life would have been like, you know? Uma, this doesn't mean that you can't change your stance now. If you truly feel heartbroken on what you had to go through, tell your story. Show other women that if they go through with an abortion, it will actually haunt them the rest of their lives. Oh, hell no, I'm out. What? Malcolm! Malcolm! We are almost a month out from Halloween. Can you believe it? My favorite holiday. Me so excited! Well, if you want to be scary, you're going to need a good costume. And because you're going to need a good costume, I already started thinking of some good pop culture inspired ones that you could do this year. I feel like Kim Kardashian's Met Gala outfit is an easy option. I mean, she's literally a Dementor from Harry Potter, except instead of eating the happiness of wizard students or whatever, she eats designer brand salads. Guess what? <laughs> now, if you need a BFF costume, someone has got to be Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie from the Simple Life cover, you know, with the overalls and the pitchfork. <laughs> Girls, come here, please! Ted Lasso, easy. Get a mustache, a slinky workout jacket, and a visor. Yay, sports! Speaking as we were mere moments ago about time, I unfortunately don't have any. I have a branding meeting. So. Oh, I always feel so bad for the cows, but you gotta do it, otherwise they get lost. Ooh, or you could be Olivia Rodrigo's sticker face from her Sour album. You're welcome for that idea. Don't give away what you're going as this year yet because we don't want copycats, but share in the comments your most creative costume idea from years past. What do you think of this? <laughs> You, like it? you know, I had never even seen Beetlejuice until the other night. I watched it for the first time with Nick. To be honest, I didn't love it, but I did appreciate it from an art standpoint, I suppose. To me, the best Halloween movie is Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. Cinematic masterpiece. Chef's kiss. Watch me swing right in. Every Thursday, we step into my hot pink time machine, and since we did a bunch of evergreen episodes last week, while well, my editor took a vacation without me, you get some special bonus stories from this week and last. By the way, since we're smack dab in the middle of TV season, this is a very TV-heavy segment, so here is your Pop Culture Rewind. In 1969, one of my fave Baby Murderino cartoons was born. The OG, Scooby-Doo, where are you? Scooby-Doo, where are you? We got some work to do. 
1981, conservative Sandra Day O'Connor was sworn in as the first woman to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court. How iconic is this pink and purple outfit, O.G.L. Woods? In the area of abortion is that I am opposed to it as a matter of birth control or otherwise. Um, the subject of abortion is a valid one, in my view, for legislative action. Uh, subject to any constitutional restraints or limitations. This week in 1987, Full House premiered on ABC. Ah, uh, back when San Francisco didn't smell like poop. Blue, 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 blue. We got Friends, a show I hate, but many of you love. <laughs> Here's a juicy one. Last week in 1996, the O.J. Simpson civil trial began. <laughs> this whole thing is making my head hurt. I don't want to think about it. Wear your mask. In 1999, this week, Law & Order SVU debuted on NBC. I still watch the show on Hulu, one of my other favorites. <laughs> And in 2009, Modern Family premiered on ABC as well. And that's what happened this week and last in pop culture history. Here's the skinny, a little manx. Tonight at midnight Eastern, which means 9 p.m. Pacific, lucky for the West Coast peeps, you get a brand new episode of The Spillover. To find out who the special guest is, prepare for the announcement at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific tonight on Politics Instagram. Make sure you take a pic of yourself listening to it in the car, screenshot it, share it to your stories, tell everyone about my totally awesome, totally life-changing, skin-clearing podcast. Then subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and leave a five-star review if you like the show. And by the way, if you want to, you can watch the show every Friday on TPSA Live or the Politics YouTube channel. As for Politics, this is the bread and butter show, the show that made the spillover even possible. Before you go anywhere today, tap the heart, tell us the most creative Halloween costume you've ever had, and which of those new shows you're the most excited for. Share this episode with your friends, and if you hit the save button, it may be the most important thing you can do to help us, so do that. We're back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. Support Poplitics, the first ever conservative pop culture daily show by subscribing to our channel, turning on notifications, and of course, hitting the thumbs up. Also, our main home is on Instagram. Seriously, just trust me, that's when the real magic happens. Follow us there at Poplitics.